welcome to the video. I want to introduce you to Studio One Five, which is a DAW by Presonus. And for the last couple of days, I've been familiarizing myself uh, with the various different uh, workflow methods and some of the tools that it offers. By no means do I know this program inside out yet. I've still got a lot to learn. However, as a Cubase user, you know, not to blow smoke up my ass, but a fairly advanced user of Cubase, I know the door really well, I know the limitations of it. This, for me, the initial first impressions with uh, Studio One have been very positive, very positive indeed. In, in fact, I'm very impressed with some of the workflow uh, methods inside of this DAW. Now, there are a couple of things, well, mainly one thing that bugs me so far, or two things, two little things, one's a major thing, one's a minor thing uh, that have bugged me, um, but so far, there's a lot of positive things to say about this DAW. So first of all, I want to show you how easy it is to manage your templates inside of this. But first of all, let me just mention the worst thing about this DAW. Currently, because I come from Cubase, one of the coolest things about Cubase when you're moving around is if you hold the middle mouse button down on your mouse, you can do this with it. Okay, you can pan the screen around. And also when you're scrolling with the mouse, it's much quicker. Um, unfortunately, for Studio One, this panning thing doesn't exist unless you install a, a little script, um, which I can link and make available um, just to make this much easier. Usually, if you press the metal ma middle mouse button, it will bring up the uh, toolbar uh, for like this, um, so you can select the tools. So that'd be nice to see. And also, the scrolling is painfully slow. Generally, though, there isn't really anything that's bothered me greatly since using Studio One, although there's still time. Here we have uh, a combination of Art One and some other things being loaded up. Now to manage how you view all these things, especially when you've got a lot of tracks in the project, can be quite um, a daunting thing unless you've got your own workflow sorted out for it inside your DAW. But where this makes things really easy in Persona Studio One is that obviously you can filter things by section depending on what kind of naming schemes you've used. So I could go type brass in and it'll only show me patches that have got the name brass in if i want to find my horns i could type in horns and it will show me uh, where my horns are etc etc and then you can crack on working um now you can bind things to macros and create your own macro change to do this so you don't have to type it out and you've just got like if you've got i don't know some kind of ipad or stream deck controller that you can use to program functions to you could map them to that but where this is really cool and what I really like is up here. Up here, there's this thing called macro. Uh, it's like a macro toolbar and you click on this and by default, it will load up some um, buttons, which are programmable buttons. You can do anything with these. You can assign them macros, actions, or certain th setups. I haven't quite explored all of them yet, but you can program these buttons to do anything you want, basically. It's like having the logical editor of Cubase but as a customizable toolbar that you can add things to. And the great thing about it is that you can create your own toolbar. Like here, I've started building one. So let's say, for example, I want to view all my strings. I can click on view strings and there you go. It will show me all my strings. If I want to view all my brass patches, I can do that. And again, I can create a button for woodwinds, percussion, the choirs, and view everything if I want. And let's say that I've got a load of tracks that have got no MIDI data on. I, I can create a, a button that, you know, whatever's in this region that's got MIDI data on, I can just go view events and it will show me everything that I'm currently using in a project, which is insanely, insanely useful. And I've only just scraped the surface with the functionality of this. I'm sure you could create some very decent macro chains and have buttons at your disposal that, are, disposal that are very powerful and really, you know, speed up how you work with your projects. Now, another thing that's really cool about this is that I can also do things like articulation views. So if I want to find all my pizzicato, sure, I'll just click on pizzicato and it will show me anything with pizzicato on in my template. Same with marcatos, staccatos, anything. And it's so easy to set up. You literally right click, go, oh, okay, I want to create a new button what do we want this one to do? Well, let's assign it a new macro. Let's say I want it to find staccatissimos. I could type in here, filter, uh, filter channels, and then call it 
staccatissimo. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to make that the, the, the trigger command. So it will search for that word or anything with that word contained in it and then display it. Now, when we click on staccatissimo, I've got none in my project, so it's not going to find <laughs> When editing this video, I uh, discovered why it wasn't working, and it was simply because I typed in scatatissimo, <laughs> everyone's favorite articulation. Let's change something else. Um, edit macro. I don't know. Uh, legato. That's an easy one. I had to really think them for a second. Okay, so anything with legato in. Also update this name, which is cool. You can rename all these buttons. If I click legato, let's try just leg. There we go. That makes sense because I've abbreviated it to leg and not legato. So um, yeah, it is, it is sensitive to what you import. So if you put legato, it'll be looking for things with legato, but obviously I've got nothing called legato. So it's just looking for leg. Oh, that was a mouthful. But yeah, you can, you can see how this is really useful. And another thing that it's really freaking useful for is from a mixing point of view. Uh, now, if I open up the mixer, let's say, okay, I, I've rendered all the project down, I've got all the stems ready to mix, um, and I want to start doing the basics like high pass and low pass, and then maybe add a compressor in, then a, a, a you know a sculpting EQ afterwards. Super simple to do. Obviously, you can do it from the traditional method of you know you type in your plugin and you can pop it in, or you can drag and drop your um, inserts into the mixer. But something that I've always wanted to be able to do in Cubase, and it's not possible to do, is create a logical editor function that allows you to apply a a, um, a plugin insert to any track you've selected, or add a selection or a chain of inserts to a track from a single button. And you've not been been able to do that in Cubase. Now with Studio One, look at this. I've got two up here that I've already set up, so. Let's say I want to apply a basic high low cut across all the strings here to tidy them up. I've got this button here I've set up. I can click on it. Boom. It's loading up the ink EQ that I've told it to load up. And it's also loaded up the setting with it that I selected and saved. Such a big deal to me. That is that's such a time saver. And now for another one here, let's say I want to insert Neutron 3 on all those selected uh, selected channels or the compressor for Neutron 3, you can just click it and it does it and it will load up the preset that I've you know already saved as default to load up. Now let me show you how easy this is to set up. You go right click and we're going to a uh, new button and um, going to assign a new macro and let's say insert, uh, I can't remember what the macro is actually, I think it's add Add insert, there we go. So we've got add insert, oh no, it's not add insert. God, I've forgotten what it's called. Let me just double check. <laughs> Edit macro, what is it? Add insert to selected channel, that's the one. I've still got to remember all these things, you see. It's, it's, it's always different between uh, uh, DAWs. So add insert to selected channel. So you see you've got these three dots here, and the three dots means that it's got an additional option if you double click on the text once you've added it in. Um, so I've got an effects change. So if I've created any presets that have a combination of plugins and set up in the chain that I want, so let's say I've got an analog chain that I've set up to make, you know, things sound a bit more analog, I could load that and recall it. But if you want to do an individual, um, preset for an individual plugin, you just click device, go down to the menu here. What should we add in? Let's add some, uh, let's get some fab filter, some love. I'm just going to type fab. And there you go, it's taking us down to the fab filter. Let's say we want Pro Q3, and uh, I could select a preset. Let's do that. Okay, and then uh, fab Q3, that'll be the name of the button. We can always rename it after if we're happy. And now with these channels selected, I can click fab three. And you can see it's already loading in those plugins and boom. You know, the preset I've sometimes loaded up. There, this seems to be a bug. The preset I, I saved 
and applied hasn't quite applied but a couple little things like that i've noticed in uh in studio one but you can see the power of this that's an easy fix you can see how useful this is from a mixing point of view as well now what else is really cool about studio one is let's say um you want to do modular template building what i would do is create one project with all of the instruments that i want loaded up and set up how i wish and then save that as a template and what this does is it will put it in the file browser and if you put all of your patches inside of folders and name if you've done any routing like groups effects and sends they also get saved as well and and what you can do is come over to you know this one's called uh enough samples something for some reason oh that's just navigating to that one uh, so let's say i go to um this template here i need to update it in fact this will be great because i can show you guys this in real time so we're going to update this template i'm going to go uh let me delete all the midi off here i'm going to go save as template and i'm going to replace the existing one well yeah I'll replace that one click OK. Now what I'm going to do is refresh the tab here and then if we navigate to that Metropolis Arc 1 split sign template you'll see that all the folders with the instruments are listed here. Now that means if I close this and create a new project I'll show you how simple it is to modularly put your templates together and if you're very methodical about how you do this and you know get it down with your search terms and how you label tracks and then take advantage of this macro uh, bar at the top you're going to have so much fun trying to you know working with your libraries so let's create a new one okay so we got this here let's say i want to build my template out i'm going to select the folder select the patches and i want you know those loaded in and this is something that's always plagued me with Cubase with track presets because it doesn't save folders and it doesn't save effects and X, Y, Z. Um, and there you go. You can load them in just like that. This is how easy it should be. So again, you can drag and drop your next one over. And let's say I want all the the um, the brass out of the center brass core. I can grab those, select them, drag and drop them in and it's as simple as that and it remembers all the settings that you applied so you can see how this is really useful and it does a great job of it there could be some improvements to how this works but the the foundations are there and that's the main thing for me you know the ability to do this is really really cool so i'll keep this video um short because it's already getting pretty long now but as I say, there's a lot to like about Studio One at the moment. So I'd encourage you to go check out the demo of it and download it and have a play around with some of the things you like. Um, when it comes to actually setting up templates as well from within this, there's a couple of additional features that make it really quick as well for connecting your tracks to outputs, um, X, Y, Z. But I'll cover that in future videos. It's just more so an initial first impression with this one.